welcome to the Lamborghini Huracan. It is the start of a new week. I spent the last few days with Williams Martini Racing, enjoying the company of Felipe Massa and Valtteri Bottas. We did drifting and I also did a Facebook Live session with those guys. So if you didn't see it, be sure to go on to the Martini Facebook page and check that out. But today is another exciting chapter uh, in my visit to Italy. Um, clearly, we've uh, managed to get hold of a Lamborghini Huracan and our first port of call is the Martini factory. And then afterwards, we're gonna head up into the mountains for a blast around in this car to find out what it's all about. So, let's talk more driving. a beautiful drive through the Italian countryside. We finally arrived. We are here at the Martini house, Casa Martini, and I'm standing on the original terrazzo. This is where it all started. This is where parties have gone down. Uh, but what I'm interested in is their racing history. Of course, that spans back decades. And I've heard that they have a pretty cool museum here dedicated to their motorsports history. So. Let's have a look around here and see what's what. I have just come back inside. It's pushing 30 degrees outside, but amazingly, I've been given free access. And as I'm sure if you can tell right now, I am heading underground to the catacombs underneath the martini house. Look where we are, man. This feels really weird. They just said, love you go. And uh, yeah, I'm now down here. Check this out. Um, I understand that under normal circumstances, you wouldn't just be roaming around down here uh, on your own, but we've been given fantastic access to the whole of this place. So just go and check it out. So in character of this channel, it's all about me sharing the experiences with you guys. I'd like to take you along for these journeys. I'm just wandering around, checking out random rooms. Look, there's all of this sort of stuff, obviously. I'm not here for this so much, as wonderful as it is to see. Apparently, somewhere around here is the motorsports room, which feels like such a juxtaposition of interest next to all of these old barrels and things like this. I mean, what is going on in here? Like, interesting ingredients for the vermouth. But it's amazing to be down here because it's really cool and outside is super hot. Okay, here we are. We've entered the realms of something interesting and look at that. That, I believe, is the front of a barrel that has now been turned into a door. That whole thing actually opens uh, and you can walk through that into this area here, which I believe later on I'm gonna get my chance to make my own vermouth. I think the museum is in there, so let's go check it out. Okay, that's it for our quick stop at Martini. It's been a fantastic experience. But, back to the Lambo. We're now gonna jump in this car and wind our way up some beautiful Italian country roads to a Michelin star restaurant. Uh, I'm not sure how long it'll take, but from the pictures I've seen, it's gonna be stunning and I can't wait to actually get the Lambo in a territory where I can explore it. Like, properly rather than driving 
along motorways, which we did all the way here. So, without further ado, back to the Italian Stallion, and let's hit the road. some time in the Lamborghini Huracan. Now, my thoughts on this is I don't know how much more Italian it could possibly be. I am somewhere absolutely stunning. I'm in the hills of Italy near a place called Bergamo. Hey. And it's just absolutely stunning. And I'm amongst vineyards, stunning vistas and I'm in a bright orange Lambo. I mean, how much more fantastic can it be? Well, I'll show you how much more fantastic. We're also just so happen to be on the side of a hill range slash mountain range and the roads are just phenomenal. So, <laughs> so let's explore what this Lambo is all about. We're on some amazing roads. I'll tell you one thing, I've been having a bit of experience with this car so far and there's one thing that Lambo does fantastically well and that's drama. It's, so listen, listen to this. Oh, the pops and bangs on the overrun. Stupendous. Listen to that. Now, I'm not sure where to really begin. I don't know whether I should begin with scenery, begin with car. Everywhere I look is beautiful and every turn I take is joyous. But let's get a little bit chatty about this car first. Sorry, it's taking my attention somewhat because these roads are super twisty. But let's start with the bad things. And there aren't many, there aren't many. But my first criticism with the car is it understeers a lot. I mean, we are on sticky, dry roads. It's 30 degrees still here. And on some of these tighter hairpins, this front end does wash out quite badly, actually. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if that's because some of these are slow and lock to lock. And of course, with this thing being four wheel drive, those front wheels are always turning. But right now, not necessarily for the right reasons. They're sort of pulling me to the corner. That exhaust makes up for it. <laughs> now here's something else. Lambos of old, well, when I say old, LP560s, Lambos of that era, obviously had the old school single clutch gearbox. I'm just gonna put up these windows. Um, yeah, older Lambos, LP560, and let's face it, even the Aventador has that shoddy single clutch gearbox. And it's fine for a while and it adds a bit of drama because when you shift, it's like someone's hit you in the back of the head with a shovel. Boom. Yeah, just like that. But after a while, you want that finesse that comes of a dual clutch gearbox. For me, these single clutch sort of semi-automated manual gearboxes they aren't the best of both worlds it's not as engaging as a manual and it's not as smooth or as fast as a twin clutch box like this this car this gearbox is fantastic it's an absolute revelation in fact going from an lp560 to this is night and day and not just from it being a smooth shift but because it puts that power down and you floor 
that throttle and with every single shift it's just power 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 there's no interruption there's no jerking great great box same thing happened with the um, Audi R8 I actually owned uh, one of the earlier V8 R8s with these again single clutch gearbox I drove a manual R8 after that car and I wish I'd have gone for a manual car just much much better but what Audi and did up doing with the uh, facelift GM1 R8. The R8 V10 Plus, the twin clutch gearbox, for me elevated that car from sports car to supercar. It was a complete game changer. Same with this, proper gearbox, now a very well sorted car. Now, in terms of speed, don't get me wrong, this thing does not hang around at all. And of course, we've got four wheel drive. So where it does sometimes lack a little bit in the corners with understeer, under full throttle, it more than makes up for it. The main thing for me though on days like this, when it comes to having a road trip or an adventure where you just want to immerse yourself in the driving experience, it doesn't matter what it is as long as it puts a smile on your face right now. I am ticking all the right boxes that makes for the perfect driving journey. We're in Italy, the sun is shining, I'm in an, an Italian supercar and I'm on roads which just looks like someone took a load of spaghetti and went, go and drive that sir. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. What is fantastic as well about tight, twisty driving roads is you don't have to go very fast to enjoy them and that is magic because let's face it these cars any cars in this bracket you could argue that they're actually too fast most of the time you're not going to be extrapolating half of the performance of these cars until you get to roads like this they're just ultra super twisty tight roads and here's where this four-wheel drive comes in play first gear No spinning up, oh, and it's just fab. That's V10 soundtrack. This is something else. Right now, I'm waving to some locals on the drive here, and we'll go back to engines shortly. But on the drive here, the uh, emotion from the Italians when they see a supercar made in their country, it is a slice of pride. You know, I'm driving down the motorway and I feel like I'm some Italian diplomat or something. People are waving and like kids with their faces pressed against the window and they really, really love it. And that as well is something fantastic. When you're driving through England in a supercar, you don't always get the same treatment. <laughs> in fact, sometimes you get quite the opposite. Anyway, back to engines. Turbo's taking over, hybrids are coming on board. This is no doubt gonna be one of the last naturally aspirated V10 engines in a mass-produced sports car. And, you know, being able to be part of the generation which got to enjoy an engine like this, I feel super privileged. Right now, I just wanna immerse you more, really, in the experience of what's happening. I'm currently winding up this beautiful mountain road towards my hotel for the evening. I won't sign off in the car itself. I will take you for a quick walk around the hotel because from what I've seen, oh, actually it is it is here. Wow, this is a tight turn. From what I've seen, this place is absolutely stunning.
All right, and that is it. That is a quick look at the San Maurizio Hotel. As you can see, the views here are absolutely unbelievable. I felt an obligation to show you before I signed off properly. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you've seen over the last few days, please subscribe to Mr. JWW because there's a lot more where that came from. See you next time, guys. Ciao.